Okay, um, my name is Ruby. I went to Parsons, I just graduated, uh, on Zoom. And my concentration was illustration, which means that um, every way that you can make a picture, I learned how to make a picture. So, yeah, we're gonna do some printmaking, some DIY scrappy printmaking. This is my little basket of foraged, my scavenged material basket. Um, I have a fork. You can find this in your silverware drawer. Um, paper towel. That's the law. That's <laughs> true. My vegetables, my little, our little dinner is um, a mushy potato that I found in the back of the cabinet. Um, and an apple that I just cut and is brown and gross already. Um, anything that you find that your parents will let you um, dip in paint works. Alright, so this is yellow. This is lighter yellow. Um, this is just a piece of fun little paper I found. Um, this is what I'm going to make my picture on, whatever it will be. But I want to test out all of the stamp. The stamp. I'm going to test out all the stamps first. So I have a little scrap piece of paper to do that. Um, and I chose a glittery one because everything has to be pretty. Um, and I also have this Tupperware lid. Maybe don't use your parents' Tupperware. Um, you can fold a piece of tin foil, or you can use your parents' Tupperware and clean it really good and they won't know. Um, and then the last thing that I have is a little folded over index card because when you're laying out your ink or your paint or whatever, even if you're not um, in a, like a professional studio and you're not using printmaking ink, you still want like to do it right um, so that it works. And something that's really important is making sure that you have an even coating of your ink on your like ink holding surface um, so that when you put the stamp on it, you're not getting like a really gloopy corner and it doesn't show up on one side. You know, like your stamp, a stamp pad has an even surface and like an even distribution of ink. So we're gonna sort of follow that guy's lead. I'm just gonna take my folded over index card and drag my ink across the Tupperware. Okay, so I have a beautiful little coating of blue. Um, and I'm gonna see what I can do with the straw. If you wanted to make a straight line, I guess you could go with the body. Um, I'm gonna try and make a little circle. So, super complicated stuff. You're just gonna put it on a plate. Make sure you got some ink. It's not that complicated. So here's my little scrap piece of paper, and I'm gonna, I just cross my fingers and hope that this looks nice. Press hard. Okay, so I've regooped my plate. <laughs> Um, so that there's a thicker layer of ink because my circle came out like a little sad. So, um, movie magic is, um, circle's perfect now. It's a beautiful perfect circle. Um, indeed, indeed. Now that I know the straw works, I'm gonna move on to my fork, I think. <laughs> okay. So the back of the fork is pretty coated. You can kind of just rock it down. And back. Whoop. Okay. This is something called a ghost print, which is when you use the same object that you've inked without going back. So this is a ghost print of that image. That's a pretty cool texture if you want to like fill an image up with just prints. And I'm going to go with my paper towel. And there are two things I want to test out with the paper towel. One is if I can get the texture of the paper towel just as a print. And then also, I want to see what happens, this is awesome stuff, um, if I crumble up my paper towel and I can maybe get some of that fun folded up paper texture. So I'm just gonna see what happens. Okay, that's what I wanted. That's fun. I think that's nice. I'm gonna find the side that is like a little bit more imprinted. It's very subtle um, and that's the side that I'm going to use so really gentle okay gorgeous I don't know what I would do with this paper towel print what it could turn into but it's just fun to know that you can do something the possibilities are there 
Yeah, the possibilities are there. Yeah. That, that was, this is clearly possible. I'm going to take half of my potato, um, and I want to draw an outline first of the little picture I want to carve out. If you use a pen or a marker, um, it's going to mix with the potato wet, and it's going to ruin your pen and your marker, and it's not going to look nice. So I just sharpened a pencil, um, not very well, but, you know, enough, and I'm going to make an indent as my outline instead of a drawing. This is hard to see if you're not me, but I promise I can see it. All right, sick. <laughs> so I drew my star. It looks awesome. Mm -hmm. It makes sense why they gave me a degree in this. Don't cut towards yourself. Um, if you don't have a firm grip on your object, please don't put the sharp thing in the in the object. Um, do it. Do it right. Made me proud. So the first thing that I'm gonna do with my knife is go over that outline I did, but a little bit better. Cause we're gonna get some nice clean lines here. Also, if you're using a potato that you bought at the store or isn't like seven months old, um, it's not gonna be as mushy and you're gonna get a little bit more resistance and probably a better shape than I am. I think it's easier to carve things that have like right angles and straight lines um, than something really organic and round. Mm -hmm. So if you want to carve a stamp and you're not um, an expert woodcutter slash relief print maker, probably stick to something with straighter lines. To cut my star out, I'm going to extend the lines that I carved all the way to the outside of the potato. What I want to do is chop away everything that isn't the star from the outside. So from the bottom of this indent to here, which you can see pretty clearly, and I'm holding the potato, I'm holding it firmly, and I'm not carving towards my face or my hands or my trunk, um, and neither will you. <laughs> I'm just going to saw down. And you might have to do this a couple of times because you want to make sure you get all the way in. And then you can just peel it away. It's amazing, I know. I have a cute little star. I'm just gonna clear my space. Um, and with what's left of my paper towel, I'm just gonna dab some of the liquid off because I don't want it there. It doesn't have to be perfect. That's fun. Okay. <laughs> and stamp. What I'm doing when I'm pressing anything, when I'm making any mark is I'm pushing down a lot of pressure from the top and I'm kind of wiggling my hand around to make sure that I get all of the corners and the inside. Great. So very thoroughly. Oh, it's a little wet, a little wet star. Now I'm going to try it with my paint. <laughs> Ooh. So remember what I said about gloopy? Um, it's a little gloopy right there. And I don't want that. So I'm going to try and find some clean space on my little plate. Okay. And I'm going to test it. And okay. So there's way too much paint. I used way too much ink. And that's why it's sort of like bloop. I know that the picture I want to make is going to be um, a moon and some stars. So I know already that this is going to be my moon shape because it's sort of a moon shape. All right, it's perfect, not to brag. I think the fun thing about doing it like this instead of just going to the store and buying a stamp um, is that it looks like you did it at home and like in a nice, sweet little way. Um, I like a little DIY. I don't think it has to look perfect and it's better if it doesn't look perfect, in my opinion. So it's okay if there's like a little bit of water on the surface or you didn't ink your plate perfectly. Um, no one's going to grade you and looks nice. This is the library. This is the library. There's no grades at the library. I don't do grading here. We do community work. So I'm going to do my little moon. My little crescent moon. No. <laughs> I'm going to take my paintbrush now um, and just make it look a little bit more like a moon because, I mean, there's a difference between DIY and a smush on a, on a piece of paper, you know what I mean? 
Ready? Mm -hmm. Oh! <sighs> Come on. Beautiful. Doesn't get much better than Stunning. that. Stunning. I think I'm going to take my little straw friend um, out of hiding. Um, I'm going to use a fork to make some grass. Um, I'm going to take my paintbrush and add some details because I want to and you can too. Because the fun thing about making, you know, little print images instead of just drawing them is you can make a bunch really quickly and you can give them to people that you love. I can make like five of these cards pretty quickly. Uh, and about five times the time it took me to make one, which wasn't very long, and I could personalize each one of them. It would take me 60 seconds if I'm feeling crazy, mm -hmm. and you have a nice little card to give to the bus driver. You could do this on any material. Like what? Um, a t-shirt, mm -hmm. a tote bag, mm -hmm. um, the table, um, the inside cover of a book. If you Ooh. want to give somebody a book, and because that's a fun present, do you want to, you know, leave your mark? It's pretty good, um, but I think you guys should aim for better, because a moving target um, is the best way to go. Wonderful. Thank you, Ruby. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you.